But you have to look at it from this. Once you call a spade a spade and you have exposed the fraud before their eyes in the public, on the public side, by, do, by doing it that way, you've now bought yourself the proper time to now come back with an ecclesiastical deed poll on the original summons or the original issue and then lodge that through not open court, right, but through the clerk, which is the trustee or, or proto-notary, pro, sorry, proto-notary, uh, or possibly through if there is an ecclesiastical role in the court, such as a chapel, which more often than not, you'll find a chapel hidden in the most remotest corner of a court, probably next to a janitor's closet, as, uh, as I found it. Uh, but nonetheless, is that's a, a now a proper salvage uh, window to the forgiveness. Because again, it's all about forgiveness. And, and if they openly uh, refuse forgiveness on an open court, is again, is they, they, at that point, they've, they've lost all ecclesiastical authority. Uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, he kind of had a, when I mentioned the state court administrator, he got a strange look on his face and said, well, and he walked away. I, I was just curious if, uh, like on a prosecutor level, they appoint their deputies, they have the same authority as them and all this. I found out in this county the prosecutor's probably the most highest paid person in the system. So, Well, he has to be highest paid because he's the one holding the liability. Well, and would, would he be the administrator? And would there not be somebody above them when the plaintiff comes in at you from a so-called state level? So, well, the the issue is that it is actually that the roles are actually being revolved, right? It, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like that old game, musical chairs, and and when the music stops, someone someone's left out standing, right? Is right. is basically through is we we know there's three jurisdictions of court. We know that if if a, if you do something and and answer a judge back in a rude manner or or try to bring truth into a court which we know it can't happen because uh, uh, courts are, are courts run on facts uh, in evidence not of evidence right, right. so uh, from there is we, we start to see a clearer picture that as the rotation of the venue happens uh, also, a, a rotation of authority happens because at one point we have the judge as a trustee, then he becomes an administrator, and then a clerk becomes a trustee. Then that changes again as we have the prosecutor as an executor role, but then also switches roles as well. Now, the idea of having a lawyer, right, because this, there's this whole thing going on about uh, self representation. Well, uh, I always think it's good to have a lawyer because somebody has to go to jail. Uh, it, 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 but the, the issue is this, is if you're doing uh, a, a, a position where you're not being represented and, and you're doing the route of an ecclesiastical deed poll to, to prove standing, is, is get relief first so that the, the hounds are not eating your throat, which then gives you uh, maybe days, weeks, or possibly even months to actually get your administrative affairs in, 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 uh, up to speed and up to par. So going back to this thing about the prosecutor, is we find that the court roles, they are not set in stone. Uh, they are following administration, as bankers, which means they make it up as they go along. They switch the roles. Uh, the, the issue is to be competent to know that the prosecutor is liable. As such, is what they're doing is they're trying to get you to bait and switch the executor role on you, which is through the uh, consent. 
Now, uh, an example of an executor would be the President of the United States. Okay, now how would I know that? Say, say, I, say I, I survived on a desert island for 30 years and knew absolutely nothing, but only had a TV, and that's my only window, unfortunately, to the world. And, and I would see on many occasions uh, the president shaking hands and signing documents. Well, an executor executes... In other words, he's a signatory. He signs. He executes the moving title from one place to another. We see that the executor role of the, of the commander-in-chief holds the liability. Therefore, that's why the amount of security placed on that position uh, so no one can get near the liability holder. Uh, it's a fascinating, fascinating subject uh, because there was a lot of light that came out of the executor letter in, in how that, that, that kind of operates and works. And again, as Frank's a little bit more knowledgeable in terms of uh, 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 those kind of things, and we, we can get a little bit more into detail with Frank on that. Great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, on the uh, chat, I'd like to uh, help folks clear up their uh maybe a, a misunderstanding or a request regarding the deed pool. Uh, I believe it's Canon 1564 is the actual uh, writing of the deed pool that goes on the blue paper. So you should be able to see that as you look that up. Um, and uh, also, um, I'm getting ready to unmute here. Darlene, um, 99, she has a question. Uh, We'll get back to a couple of these other chat things they're talking about uh, that they're asking regarding society, and we can actually go into why it is that the true person um, is the one that can issue the deed poll, not a Roman person. If you could distinguish between those two items, and I'll um, um, unmute Darlene here after. Do you think sure, you can explain absolutely. that in a couple of minutes? Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think. Um, I, I think it's time uh, uh, to just quickly talk about trusts because um, uh, one of the things that hasn't been done till now is, is proper conveyance of, of true real property. And partly from the reason is how the system operates out of dead trust law and, and dead estate, or, or, right? So... I'm just going to explain rights and administration uh, in positive law. And this is Article 84 on 1-1heaven.org under positive law, and that's trust, uh, Canon 1147. A trust is a fictional form of relationship and agreement whereby certain form rights and obligations are lawfully conveyed to the control of one or more persons as administrators for the benefit of one or more other persons. So all valid trusts possess the following characteristics, uh, known as the standard characteristics of a trust. One, a trust instrument, also known as a trust deed, identifying the essential form of the trust, the property to be conveyed to create the trust, and how the trust shall be administered. And two, an owner of the property or authorized person having given permission to create the trust instrument and convey the property form into the trust. And three, a collection of property within the trust defined as the trust corpus, also body or body corporate. Four, at least one administrator of the trust, also known as the trustee, who is neither the owner or authorized person conveyed the property into trust, appointed in accordance with the trust instrument, who is then responsible for the administration of the assets of the trust, being the trust corpus, also being the collection of property. And five, a separate and unique set of accounts held by the trustees, also known as a separate fund for the recording of all administrative transactions and duties, 
and six, the formalization of rights of property conveyed into the trust into a legal title held by the trustees of one or more equitable titles permitting one or more beneficiaries lawful use of trust property consistent with the trust instrument. And seven, one or more beneficiaries. All right, so by reading that out is, uh, let's uh, let's have a look at, uh, it, it specifically the, this whole thing about ownership because ownership is the monetized sin of possession when we look to see that all atoms wave particles of the universe the entire realm of matter is not ours how do I know you don't own your own body well simple because Myself and everyone on this call one day will cease to be. Uh, the avatar of your body will go back to the earth. Uh, it's, it's earth elements, so therefore it is land. Right? So if you can get where I'm going with this, is you see that because your body is essentially earth elements, it's land, then uh, obviously ownership must be through the divine creator. And it is definitely sure that when we start getting into the problems of ownership in the system, saying, I own this and that's mine and give me and my, uh, we see that these are conditions that was early thought a long time ago before the introduction of Sesta KV Trusts it was worked into the uh, Jewish philosophies of Philo uh, that, uh, that there's a premise that Philo wrote down in, uh, in Old Code that stated that good man is free, evil man is a slave to possessions. And we see that that, that codification of those philosophies of Philo worked its way it ways into the uh, the codes of law that we have today because the the concept of ownership is sin you can't actually own anything everything is already pre-owned by the divine creator so think of yourself as a bar association esquire trying to argue that at law in front of a competent authority to argue that all matter in the universe is not uh, owned by the divine creator. Now, I, I don't know, but that, that screams of incompetence and error at law. So therefore, we start to see that uh, a divine trust, right, is actually a purely spiritual trust validly registered into the great register and public record of one heaven containing actual spiritual form as well as divine property administrated by the treasury of one heaven which is apostolic uh, as trustee in accordance with sacred covenant pactum de singularis calum so in other words it's a sacred deed for the benefice of a divine person so I'm just going to go over the canons and uh, have a look at uh, at the differences in uh, in in persons. So when we go to Article 28, and uh, hold on, I just got to plug in my batteries. Getting low. Okay, when we go over to Article 28, uh, divine person. Uh, uh, we have a read at Canon 835. A divine person is the highest possible form of person being the form of a living trust corpus, also knowing is a living body corporate, being the divine spirit, an energy of a divine trust. A divine person cannot exist without the existence of a divine trust upon the conveyance of divine property and spirit to create it. An aggregate of divine trust is called a supreme divine trust. So a divine person uh, is owned by the divine trust. 
So a, a divine person is owned. So therefore, the, the owner is actually the divine. It's administered by the, tre the trustees in accordance with the most...